Hello everyone, bringing you a bonus mannequin video today. The reason for this, the poll over on Patreon, which is used to pick the topic for mannequin of the month each month, returned two uh, topics with equal votes uh, this past month. So both of those are being covered. Obviously we have mannequin of the month already. We're now talking about this, and this represents a British soldier, an infantryman specifically, and we'll talk about why that is in just a moment. A British infantryman involved in exercise Iron Hammer in November of 1988 which was a, an exercise of the British Army of the Rhine. This sort of carries on from previous videos I've made talking about Operation Lionheart and obviously men serving in British Army of the Rhine in general, talking about their kit on the mannequin. So this is very much emblematic of the, the British soldier, British infantryman, just before deployment to the Gulf, really. So it fits in quite nicely with all of, of that as well. Uh, certainly in terms of the kit and equipment worn here, this is the late Cold War British soldier. Now, the PLCE equipment we have on the mannequin here might be a little bit surprising to see that because it's more closely sort of generally it's dated 1989 and 1990, the issue set. Obviously, prior to that, there were trials versions of this as well. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we work through the kit that's on the mannequin. So, as I say, a large NATO exercise, uh, well, a large exercise in, in Germany involving British Army of the Rhine in late 1988. It's very interesting as well in that there were observers from the uh, Warsaw Pact. So you had Soviet observers, you had observers from the German Democratic Republic. And as I say, there's some footage uh, available on YouTube of this. The IWM, there's a, there's a video on, on YouTube, um, which the IWM produced, uh, which shows the exercise and shows some of these observers, which is quite interesting. I'll put a little clip of that in here, just so you can see. Uh, and that's an interesting element of this exercise, is the fact that there were observers from the other side of the Iron Curtain. Getting into the mannequin, talking a bit more about the, the kit that we have on the mannequin here. It's all pretty much bang up to date for the British Army at this time period. We of course have the Mark VI ballistic nylon helmet up here, with the, the tempered DPM cover over the top there. With these elastic bands for attaching foliage for camouflage. Standard. That's the standard issue helmet at this time period. The basic uniform consists of the KF shirt, the, the green khaki flannel shirt, which was also a wool mix by this point. And then you have on top of that the jersey heavy wool, the woolly pulley for extra warmth, given this exercise was taking place in November. And then the combat smock on top of that, which is the 1984 pattern in this instance. So basically the most up-to-date combat uniform for the British Army at the time. The web equipment, or well, the, the, the load carrying equipment, of course it's not web equipment technically, it's, it's not 1958 pattern anymore. Footage shows quite a lot of men, or a, a good number of men, using the personal load carrying equipment PLCE, which is the British Army's nylon equipment, which was be, had been trialled in the 80s and was being introduced to replace the 1958 pattern. As I say, this is more associated with sort of the Gulf War, the first Gulf War, uh, but Footage just showed that quite a lot of men have been issued early, have received an early issue of this, presumably a, a trial of what would become the issue pattern. I don't have details of that, unfortunately, but that's the inference I've drawn from it. Is probably it was a, a larger scale trial of this, which is the issue uh, set of equipment. There were preceding designs which used different fixture and fittings, the trial versions of this, but in '88 it seems that the what what, what would become the standard issue version of PLC was being trialled on a relatively large scale, you do see a lot of men using it. So, as I say, 958 pounds still predominant, but I thought I'd include this on the mannequin here as a point of interest, using the, the personal load carrying equipment. So obviously we'll look at how this is set up as we move the mannequin around. At the front here, you can see the front of the, 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 the suspension system for this, the suspenders, the braces, uh, the yoke uh, for, for supporting the equipment. That supports the front of the ammunition pouches here. Obviously you have two pockets on each side, these include a divider, which was often removed by soldiers later on and then would be removed from the design, which means that these can only hold two magazines rather than the later three. So you have a slightly limited, uh, slightly more limited ammunition carrying capacity with these. Uh, as I say, they do contain an individual, uh, they contain a divider inside to make two individual pockets for magazines, which means you end up with, as I say, the, the ability you can't carry three magazines in these, uh, in this initial design. And the waist belt here with the large Vastex buckle, as you can see there. We'll start moving this round now and we'll have a look at the, the what else is carried on the web equipment and the other details of the uniform. Looking at the left hand side of the mannequin here, you can see details of the combat smock here. You have the pen pocket on the arm here, and obviously the cuff there with the Velcro closure. 
You see the epaulette up on the shoulder there and the side profile of the Mark VI helmet. Looking at the web equipment, or looking at the, the load carrying equipment rather, we move the arm forward out of the way. You can see here the respirator haversack is carried round on the hip, on the belt. This is the uh, respirator haversack associated with the, the PLC equipment, carrying the S10 respirator in there. And as I say, it is carried on the belt of the equipment rather than its own individual carrying strap in this instance. You can also see features of the yoke here. You see the, the uh, strap that comes round under the arm to connect into and provide additional support to the ammunition pouch at the front, and then one strap coming down to support the belt. We'll move this round a bit further now and have a look at the back of the equipment and the back of the uniform. Looking at the back of the mannequin here, you can see the yoke from the equipment, and we have a large mesh panel in the centre there to make this somewhat breathable. It had taken the, the British Army quite a while to move over to a nylon equipment, or begin to move over to a nylon equipment, quite a lot of different trials, patterns and so forth. So, as I say, this was still uh, very much uh, in the early stages of being issued, uh, I believe still in the trial phase, and then it would begin to replace the 1958 pattern over the next couple of years, but in the Gulf in 1990, and even beyond that, it was still very common for men to be using 1958 pattern. As with any army, it takes a, quite a while for the new equipment to replace the old, and it tends to be the, the teeth arms, it tends to be the infantry who get it first, and then uh, supporting arms following on from that. So, across the back of the belt here, we have various different components, something which would not be common to see later on with PLC, something that was quite often ditched, is the entrenching tool. Now, this does show up in footage of Exercise Iron Hammer. It's a, a very clunky way of carrying the US, what is essentially the US trifold entrenching tool and the rubber cover, which goes with the Alice equipment, the US Army's uh, Alice equipment. The rubber cover has uh, slots in the back to take Alice clips. So this, in US service and in other NATO country service, just clips directly onto the belt with, with Alice clips. In British service, this nylon carrier was made, which carries the cover, which then has to be unbuttoned as well, and the tool removed. It's, it's a clunky way of doing things, but it's what was settled on. So that's the standard entrenching tool for use with PLC, is the, the three-fold uh, shovel entrenching tool. As I say, quite often ditched, but it does show up in footage of of exercise iron hammer being carried, so I've included that on the belt here. Next to that, we have the utility pouch, and this is, as I say, it's a utility pouch. You can carry mess tins, rations, and so forth in there. Relatively limited carrying capacity, though, when we consider that the 1958 pattern, you have the two rear pouches, or kidney pouches, across the back of the belt. Often, this would be replaced with a second utility pouch, certainly later on. That's very common to see in the Gulf, but as I say, in exercise iron hammer, the most common setup I've seen is this setup here, or possibly just with the entrenching tool removed without additional pouches added on. This is essentially as the equipment is supposed to be worn, or rather, it's this full set of components. So, a utility pouch, entrenching tool, respirator haversack, two ammunition pouches, and a water bottle pouch, which we'll get onto in just a minute. So, there's not much customization going on here, which, which makes sense at this early stage. We we'll move this round now and have a look at the right hand side. Looking at the right hand side of the mannequin here, something I should possibly have mentioned looking at the back, because it did show up better there, perhaps, is the dressing pocket on the arm of the combat smock there. You can see, moving this round out of the way, you can see the water bottle pouch here, which contains the, the, the standard black cup and bottle, as used with 1958 pattern, and obviously you can carry sterilisation tablets and so forth in there as well. It's a good size of pouch, it's a lot better than those with, used with the 1958 pattern. It's designed to easily take the bottle and the cup in there. You see we also have the other ammunition pouch round on the, the front here. As I say, a mirror image of that here. They are handed because of the way the supporting strap comes round under the arm there. They are left and right handed uh, in order for that system to work. So, the ammunition pouch there as well. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, the reason for including the PLC is to show the, the fact that in the footage at the time it is not uncommon to see this being worn. As I say, my presumption is that this was a, a, a late trial of the equipment just before it was introduced on a more general basis. The uniform and so forth, as I say, essentially the bang up to date for the British Army in the late 1980s. Hopefully you found it interesting running through all of this. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell with the notification button down below. And that will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. 
If you'd like to vote on the topics that are going to be covered in Mannequin of the Month and potentially bonus Mannequin videos, the poll is available over on Patreon to the corporal tier over there and you have the opportunity each month to vote on what's going to be covered in Mannequin of the Month. And as I say, if there's a tie, you end up with a bonus Mannequin video as well. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And of course, there will be photographs of this posted up over there as well. If you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.